Hi there, so today we're going to be showing you how to set up Microsoft SQL Server under AWS using AWS RDS. And uh, RDS is really nice because it does the following. Here's a description, you can go out on the website and read more about this, but it says that it makes it easy to set up, operate, and scale a relational database in the cloud. The best thing about this is you can Amazon will take care of things like database setup, patching, and backups so that you can focus on just doing your application. So uh, we won't get into a lot of the management features of AW, uh, AWS RDS, but what we will do is set up a SQL Server database. And then in the next video that we do, we'll show you how to restore a backup from another SQL Server backup uh, into AWS RDS for SQL Server. Um, and so that's what we'll do. So this first video will be just about getting it set up and then we'll do um, backup and restore. And then what we'll do is actually connect our RESTful web services to this uh, in running in Amazon to this database that we set up. So let's go ahead and get started. First of all, you should have get out of this uh, PowerPoint. So the first thing is you should have SQL Server Management Studio installed if you haven't done that already. Uh, that's how we're going to test that we have things connected. So um, this is a free download from Microsoft. You can go search for SM, S, SQL Server Management Studio, so SSMS, or SQL Server Management Studio, and um, I'm running version 17.4. They update it often. It'll prompt you whenever you launch it if you if you need to update it. So this is a tool that lets you um, see. I got the little prompt just now on saying that it, there's an update available. We're going to go ahead with this version. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is log into the uh, AWS Management Console. Now, if you haven't um, if you haven't signed up for the AWS free tier, uh, I would recommend you do that unless you have a paid account through your work or if you're just paying for the feature. So, uh, using the free tier means that there's um, I'm I'm going to just be working with things that are actually free for you to use. And so um, I already have my account set up, so I'm just going to go ahead and sign into the, uh, the Amazon console. And what you'll notice down here under Relational Database Service, this is where RDS is. And I actually have a database set up out there already, but we're going to set up a second one to show you what that looks like. And so uh, under the dashboard, it'll show you all the ones that are currently running, and you'll see that I've got one out here running. And so that's the goal is for us to have a second one running. And so um, what we are going to do, now you'll notice in here that there's some different features. One is to launch an Aurora database instance. Aurora is a new database uh, coming from uh, Amazon that lets you uh, have a more horizontally scalable database. And you can use the you can use MySQL and PostgreSQL for Aurora. We're not going to be doing Aurora. We're going to be doing RDS. And so we are going to actually go down here to where it says Create Instance and pick that. And we're going to launch a database instance. And you'll notice the different options you have for RDS. You can you can have Oracle, Aurora, MySQL. MariahDB or Postgres, we're going to pick SQL Server. And we're also going to check this checkbox down at the bottom that says only enable options eligible for RDS free tier usage. So we're going to be doing an, a SQL Server Express Edition install. Just hit next. And here it you can configure the machine that you're going to be using and the version of SQL Server. So I'm going to pick the latest, which is SQL Server 2017. And down here it picks the server size for you. If you're not on the free tier you can pick larger machines but we're just going to use a T2 Micro. This is a small database so it should be fine. You'll notice it has one virtual CPU and one gig of RAM so it's pretty small. Um, 
and it's going to start out with 20 gigabytes, which should be fine for what we're doing. And then you go ahead and name the uh, name the instance, whatever you'd like. So we'll type in an instance name. So um, let's call this AWS RDS. And it's going to need to be unique within uh, for all DB instances owned by your AWS account in the region. And then we will we'll need to set up a, a master username and password. So remember what this is. So I'm just going to type in a password here. So this is the this is the actual user ID and password for the database itself. So you'll need this in order to do some management from, and you'll use this when you connect from uh, SQL Server Management Studio from your desk desktop. So let's let me just jot these down real quick so I remember them. And the instance is AWS RDS, and we'll hit next. Okay, on under network and security, so we're going to let it be in this default VPC or virtual private network. The subnet, we'll leave that alone. So we will just leave all these defaults alone. Under Microsoft SQL Server or Windows Authentication, we're going to change this. Uh, well, we're not going to change this. We'll just leave this alone. And so you just want to leave all these um, as is. You'll notice that it will take care of the backup for you, which is really nice. So we'll just go, come down here at the bottom and hit launch DB instance. Now it'll take several minutes to actually launch this. So I'm going to pause the video while it runs through that so that we're not just waiting. Click back up here on the little AWS logo and go down to relational database service and then click on instances. And you'll see right here that it's creating. So we will uh, just wait and pause the video until that's done. So you can see this takes a few minutes. It's now in the process of doing a backup. So it just creates the database and then backs it up initially. And so we'll just keep waiting. Okay, so our database is now created. Um, I didn't really point this out to you, but you can see the CPU here, current activity, number of connections, things like that. Um, so that's a nice little display. Once this is created, go ahead and click on your instance. And this is what's really great about Amazon uh, with managed services like this. You can see exactly what's going on out there very easily. So you can watch the CPU, um, you can see the read and write, how much storage is free, the number of connections. And then down here, there's a lot of information about how we connect to the database. So what you want to do is scroll down to where it says an endpoint. in the details here 
And you'll see that there's a lot of different information in here about your database instance. So you can look that over. Right here, this under endpoint, you want to copy this. So this is how you're going to connect to your database outside from uh, SQL Server Management Studio. Okay. All right, so we'll go ahead and launch SQL Server Management Studio. Under Connect, select Database Engine. Paste the what you just copied into the server name. Ch make sure you have uh, SQL Server Authentication selected and then type in the, the user ID and password that you created when you created the database instance. And hit connect. And this should connect to your database. Now we don't have anything in it yet. Uh, what you will notice is there's some things going on in here that are a little bit different than a normal SQL Server. For example, this RDS admin. Uh, you don't need to worry about that right now. But you have successfully created a Microsoft SQL Server database in Amazon Web Services. And if we go back over here, we should see a connection. Let's refresh this. So there's our connect right there. So you can see that this is um, this is great to be able to manage this stuff like this and to be, be able to see what's going on. Remember that Amazon will take care of database backup and restore, things like that for you, patching the server. And in the next video that we do, we'll show you how to actually um, We'll show you how to actually restore a database and uh, on on SQL Server and start using it, uh, SQL Server RDS. Now, one thing to note from a security perspective: um, when you create your instance, a security group is created in Amazon Web Services for you using the IP address that um, you created everything under. So, if you switch to a different IP address. Um, you'll have to modify the security group to either include to either add that IP address or change it to a different one. So if you do run into any problems with authentication, it's probably due to the fact that you're connecting to the database from an IP that's different than uh, the IP that you set everything up with. So I hope this is useful for you. Please like the video if it was useful. And there's other videos out there. I try to organize these in playlists. So make sure that you check out the playlists that are out there. And thanks for watching.